Book sale is live, so ten minutes, right? No, I don't know. We'll uh, we'll watch it and see. So let's take a look at the EtherScan contract. They've been going for a 0.0087 uh, on the aftermarket. Gas is pretty low right now. Mints are going crazy. Now the the thing with this one is you can you can mint right off the bat for 0.065 or you can stake. Uh, right away for 0 0.06, which is kind of an interesting uh, interesting development there. So if you want to do uh, staking off the bat, you'll earn um, orbs based on uh, tokenization, and it's dependent on which vault you want to stake in. They have three different vaults where they hold different NFTs. So they have Barrex, Chameleons, Mutant Cats, and Alpacadabras uh, in uh, this vault. They've got Kaiju Kings, Doodles, and Creature World in the Early Access Vault, and then they have the Blue Chip Vault um, with CryptoPunks, Board Apes, Cyber Kongs, Fidenzas. So I know they, uh, they've they already kind of made the first round of purchases on the Collab Vault during pre-sale. I don't think they've purchased any of the, the bigger ones yet. Maybe they have some Kaiju Kings, Doodles. These are only a couple ETH right now. These ones are definitely in the you know, 40 to 100 ETH range. But let's keep an eye out here. We're up to 2,100. Not a whole ton of mints going through. I mean, gas is starting to climb a little bit, but nothing crazy. We're up to 70 ETH in that wallet. That's pretty cool. But we'll keep an eye out. Um, let me just double check. Is this a, I think it's a 10,000 collection. Seeing the, uh, Total collection size anywhere. I thought it was 10,000. Let me double check the uh, Discord here. Wizard Treasure Collective. We just announced it. Okay, Public Styles is live. Minting FATQ, 10,000 Wizards. Okay, so it was 10,000. So I don't know if they're, uh, if they're gonna get there super quick. I think we can kind of watch this one, keep an eye on it. Yeah, they're only up to about 70 new ones here in the last few minutes. I mean, there's definitely quite a few people minting, but nothing uh, nothing crazy. Oh, man. So this person's minting, what is that, 10 at a time, and they're staking five here, two here, and two here. Interesting. Yeah, so definitely, a, definitely an interesting concept as far as kind of the staking uh, vault utility. Definitely uh, curious to see where that goes because we have a lot of a uh, lot of projects that do that right now. Like uh, Mutant Cats is one that I'm actually in uh, that does the fractionalization where they'll hold board apes or crypto punks or fidenzas in the collective project vault, and then you can uh, you know you kind of have ownership as you as you own that project, you have partial ownership of that vault. So we'll keep an eye on this mint. I don't know if I want to jump in right away. I don't think it's going to sell out crazy uh, fast, but. We will jump over to Terra Station. I know we had some questions earlier today about staking uh, Luna on Terra. So this is the Terra Station wallet. This is the default wallet for Luna. So if you're on the, on the Terra Luna ecosystem, you can jump over here to the, the Terra Station wallet. There's a tab called Staking. You can just click on that Staking uh, tab, and this is all the, the different validators you can delegate your Luna to. So delegation, staking, uh, basically the same. Same process, just by, uh, by a different name. And so this is where you can choose which validator you'd like to stake with. Um, I would definitely choose one with 100% uptime because you want uh, you want to make sure that you're getting your full rewards, uh, or that the validator is getting their full rewards. The validator commission is how what percent uh, goes to the validator for, for hosting the, the validator uh, pool. So, uh, you know, certainly 0% means you're going to get probably a higher uh, rate of rewards. But it doesn't necessarily mean that uh, that that you know infrastructure is going to be the best, right? Uh, you know, there's certainly 
uh, some benefit to having uh, good infrastructure that you know is going to be up uh, at all times. Uh, the check mark here, I'm not sure what that check mark means. I, I think it's uh, probably going to be uh, something related to verification. And let's see, maybe there's an official uh, error validation. It says active. Yeah, these ones all have check marks. So Binance is the biggest one. They have, I think, uh, like 4 million Luna staked as their delegation. So they take 4 million in that address. Um, that's the Binance pool. I'm kind of curious. Yeah, so it looks like the check marks are kind of on the ones that have logos. I wonder if that's uh, maybe the validators that have added their custom profile here. Looks like they're they're the ones with Terra Validator uh, listing, so it means they've uploaded a profile here to, to Terra Validators, which is basically uh, the directory for all the validator information. Um, I'll, I'll follow up on that. I'll see if uh, you know, if there is some other detail to that check mark. But from what I can tell, it looks like that check mark is associated with the the ones that have validator profiles. Because here's one without a check mark, no profile there. Let's see if I can find another one. Here's one with the logo. Here's one with the logo. GT Capital, I know they're a pretty big, uh, pretty big group. And I think Do Kwan, the creator of Terra, actually uh, staked a lot of his Luna here. I think he gave them. Uh, I think this is Do Kwan's wallet, the one million Luna. Um, I believe is Do Kwan, who's the creator of uh, Terra Luna. So yeah, it looks like that check mark is the uh, profiles with a or validators with a profile here on Terra Validators list. So there are, uh, are additional benefits. You know, you can stake with different validators. You don't have to delegate all of your Luna to one validator. And so there's different benefits. I mean, uh, commission is not necessarily the only factor you want to look at. So, for example, there's a lot of, uh, lot of validators or pools that incentivize you to, to delegate to them. So, for example, this KK validator, um, they, they uh, airdrop uh, Galactic's Punks NFTs. Um, you know, at least they did back in November. They did a snapshot, and then they drew a drew a winner. Um, there are some, you know, some validators that do that. Uh, you know, kind of NFT giveaways. There are some validators that uh, that airdrop you tokens if it's a validator specific to a, a particular protocol that's going to launch a project. Sometimes they'll airdrop you tokens for their project. Um, and so, you know, certain certain validators will have. This one says GP airdrop. So there's certain validators that will have. Uh, oh yeah, that's a Galactic Flux one. Certain validators that will uh, have different requirements for you to get certain airdrops or certain NFT giveaways or something, you know, they may say, okay, you have to de delegate a certain amount of Luna, uh, but you can certainly spread your Luna out. You don't have to delegate all of it to one one validator. You can delegate to multiple pools. If there's different rewards you can uh, you can get from different ones, it might be worth spreading out your Luna a little bit. But uh, that's kind of what the uh, the main main uh, factor here is the validator commission. That's how much they're going to take from the cut of their rewards that they get. From validating, they'll take a certain percent of that, which is their commission. Self-delegation is how much they've put in the pool personally, or you know, the wallet that that's hosting the the validator node. So in this case, uh, they have 9.6 million Luna total, and they've delegated 116,000 of their own Luna to this node or the validator. So good way to see that they have some skin in the game. The uh, the one other thing that you want to look at uh, when you're staking, delegating is the max commission rate and the max daily commission change. So you can see the current commission is 5%, which means they're taking 5% of the, the rewards that they're getting before they split it out between all the val all the delegators. But they can change it at 2% per day. So if it's 5% today and you're delegating to them, they could change it to 7% tomorrow. And then they could change it to 9% the day after. Well, not 9% because the max commission rate is 8%. So that's the, the maximum they could possibly raise it to. So make sure you check Check that max commission rate because this is what what they could potentially change it to, and there is a uh, a, a 21 day waiting period if you undelegate. So if you're staking Luna and you're and you want to switch pools, if you want to switch validators, um, don't undelegate it because that'll take 21 days to get your Luna back, and then you'll have to delegate it again. Just click redelegate, and then you can point to another another validator, another staking pool to stake your Luna to. So. 
That being said, uh, I currently don't have any of my Luna stake here for for the airdrops and the rewards here because I am uh, I'm using a lot of my Luna for that Astroport lock drop and the Luna X um, liquidity that I showed you in, in some previous videos. Um, but uh, the staking side of things here is, is definitely a lot more passive, a lot easier to uh, to manage. You don't really have to keep up on it every day. If you pick a good pool, you can just kind of stay with that validator and um, you know you can maybe check on it every couple of weeks and, and switch it up. But overall. You really don't have to uh, to keep an eye on it too heavy, uh, as you would compared to some of the other more uh, DeFi, uh, more risky plays in, on the DeFi side of things. All right, let's check out uh, Wizard Treasure Collective here. We're up to twenty one ninety. So yeah, Mint is not going super super fast. I'm kind of curious what the uh, open sea is looking like because I'm guessing the floor is going to drop a little bit. It's a 0.085. That's about with gas. I mean, if you're minting at 0.065 with gas, that's about what you're going to be at. Let's see if we're still getting some sales here. Yeah, sales have really died off. Um, there's a couple at 0.065. Looks like they're sweeping their own floor. This is the Wizard Contributor Wallet. So this uh, this is the project buying up their own Wizards, which is interesting that they're doing that uh, while the mint is still going on. Not necessarily a good sign to see that uh, so soon. Uh, Steggy asks, can you purchase Luna on Terra Shield or do you get it from somewhere else in transfer? So uh, that's a good question. That's something uh, a lot of people have been asking in chat as well. So if you go to CoinGecko for any coin, then this is a tip for, for anything, not just Luna. If you go to CoinGecko and click on any coin, you know, Luna's down here, Terra Luna. And you go to the markets tab, you can see all the different centralized exchanges um, that have Luna pairs. Now, not all of these are available in, in all locations. So if you're in the US, for example, Binance.com is not available, right? Binance US does not carry Luna. Um, you can't get Binance.com because you, you have to be KYC. And if you're a US citizen, you have to use Binance US. So in the US, uh, Crypto.com does have uh, Luna on their, on their app. Otherwise, KuCoin um, you can you can use from the U.S. Gemini is a good one uh, you can use from the U.S. And then Gate.io, I believe you can use from the U.S. as well. But this is a good tip for any any coin you're curious about. You know, certainly the more uh, more altcoin it is, the more uh, I should say the the smaller market cap a coin is the harder it's going to be to find on, on all of those different uh, exchanges. So if we were to jump down to see, uh, let's see something on like the third page, for example. So let's just take, uh, take this one here, Oxygen. So this one you can only get on FTX, Gate.io, Bitfinex. Um, FTX kind of has a similar split as Binance. They have an FTX.com and an FTX.us. So, um, not sure if FTX.us would carry this or not, but you kind of have to kind of have to check it out and see. Otherwise, Gate.io might be your play. Um, but that's a good way to to check into any coin, find out where to get it on a, a centralized exchange. Otherwise, uh, you know there are some decentralized exchanges you can get certain coins at as well. So I showed you how to get the uh, the strong block tokens recently, right? And uh, those were on ERC20. So that means you can go to Uniswap. Yeah, and they have it listed here. Uniswap, they have a, a pair, a pool for it. So you can go to Uniswap and just swap directly without having to go into a centralized exchange like Gate.io or KuCoin. Um, sometimes the prices are better there too, but of course then you have gas fees to worry about. So especially on Ethereum, um, you just have to check and see what's the best option for you at the time. All right, any other uh, questions on Terra, whether it be staking? Uh, we went through how to get Luna through a centralized exchange, how to find which, which exchanges have which coins. A Wizard Treasure Collective. Uh, I can give you an update on Castle Kid NFT. So I'm still holding, uh, still holding a couple of those. They have delayed the reveal, the public reveal. It was delayed till, until today, and then they've uh, they've just delayed it again. They haven't uh, announced another another uh, time for the reveal yet but they're basically saying they still need uh, to polish up some more art they're doing a like a rare one of one on a particular collaborator i'm guessing it's justin bieber uh, could be i know they have like a post malone preview as well so whoever the uh that uh 
one of one, the rare NFT, as they're trying to polish up the art on it a little bit. I'm sure they want to make sure it's not uh, not sloppy, so they're uh, they're definitely still delaying the reveal until they have that ready. So we'll keep you updated on that. You can see the floor price has, has dropped quite a bit. It was at point one, pretty much all the way, and then once they announce they're delaying it again, people are are starting to to uh, jump out of it. It looks like a little bit. So we'll keep you updated on that. We'll keep an eye on it. All right. Um, G Man says Chronos Chimps floor is up. So I've got a couple of these Chronos Chimps. This is on the Chronos chain, which is uh, Chronos. If you don't know, is the Crypto.com uh, side chain to their Crypto.org chain. Uh, their Ethereum version, basically, of the blockchain is called Kronos, CRO. I've got a couple of chimps out there. Um, I picked up for around 600 crow, 700 crow. It looks like the floor is up to in the 900s, so that's definitely good to see. A lot of more people jumping onto the Kronos chain, and. Uh, that's definitely looking pretty cool. I know a few folks have also picked up the uh, the Mad Meerkats. And those minted out, uh, I think, a day or two ago. I think it was Fuller uh, in the server here who had picked up quite a few of the Meerkats. I think he said he had like 10 or so. Uh, I didn't have enough Liquid Crow to grab 10, but I did grab uh, grab one of these at least. I know they're looking at doing some, some sort of airdrop if you hold it till the end of the year or staking or something like that. So. Um, they just picked up uh, Mad Meerkat Finance, which is mm.finance. It used to be called CrocSwap, um, but they're basically going to have uh, some passive income. They'll, they'll give you some uh, mat, um, mm tokens, mmf tokens, for providing liquidity here on their uh, on their decks. You gotta see it has that kind of pancake pancake swap uh, styling. And then you can also manually stake your, your MMF tokens here. It's your launch pad, so you can put in, uh, they're launching, I guess, in 13 hours, which is, yeah, it's about 5 a.m. Central Time U.S. Um, but you can still put in Crow here, and you'll get a certain allotment of MMF tokens uh, once it launches here. So looks like they have about 1.8 million committed so far. And as far as the uh, the floor on that, let's see. They're minting for 299, but I don't think there's bad meerkat. Floor is at 290, so right around right around mint price there. And it goes up from there, so you can see. Looks like some of the uh, some of the more basic meerkats are at the bottom there. Once you go up, you start seeing a little bit more variety as far as Variations. One million crow for the golden ones and the laser eye ones. And you have a 5% royalty on sale as well, so interesting. All right, so that's the uh, the crow, crow updates on the chrono side. All right, any other updates on, or questions I should say? Whether it be on Terra, on the Kronos NFTs, Castle Kid NFT, Wizard Treasure Collective. Um, if uh, if there's no other questions, I have something kind of fun we can jump into today. Um, if you've seen some of these horse racing games, like Zed Run, uh, like D Race, um, and Pegasi is the other one I was talking about earlier. So we can take a look at some of these different uh, horse racing games. You're seeing a lot of these kind of pop up recently. So here's Zed Run, here's D Race. Here's Pegasi. Pegasi and D-Race both have their own token. I don't know if Zedrun has their own token quite yet. I don't I don't believe they do. But basically what you can do, it looks like they're streaming on Twitch right now. So you can you can uh, get horses, which are your NFTs, you can breed them, you can, you know, buy and sell, trade them, and then you can also race them for particular prizes. Um, so right now, you know, all of these games are kind of in that alpha beta stage where they're still in development, but I know Zed Run specifically has kind of this futuristic um, track in the sky type feel to it. All their horses are very futuristic, kind of polygon styled. 
It says go, but the horses aren't running. This is interesting. Kind of funny. I wonder what the uh, comments are on this one. Oh, there we go. It was just delayed. So you can kind of see how the horses run there. Um, I know Zed Run, for example, they have quite a few. Let's take a look at what their horses are. So they're sold out uh, on the site, but on OpenSea, they run on Polygon, so 0.01 is the floor price. We got 0 0.0103. I invested in the horse race. Well, too bad there, G Man. All right, we got D Race. I know they, I'm pretty sure they all sold out pretty recently as well. I wonder if they're on OpenSea. But let's see if we can uh, grab any of the horses here. D Race. Looks like they're just selling tickets at this point. But you can see these are these are pretty high up there. 2.75 ETH is what they're trading for. Uh, they they aren't quite as far along as uh, as Zed Run in the development process. So they do have kind of this view where you can see your horse in 3D, a little bit more kind of like realistic style um, view to it. But you can see your horse. It looks like you can have a certain type of symbol there. You can um, put on your horse, and then uh, that's that. They have a bunch of different properties as well. And then Pegasi. Pegasi also kind of has that futuristic style to it, or the uh, the Pegasus, if you will. This is the the winged horse that was at Hercules that uh, that rides Pegasus. And they do have their own. They have actually two tokens. They have Pegasi, which is your token for Kind of investing in the project and then they have vis which is what you would use in the game to purchase horses or when you're winning a race you'll win win that vis token now this one i think uh yeah here you go here's a breakdown of what they're used for yeah so pgx would be your governance token that's how you kind of manage the project and then vis there's no no cap total supply so i just use it for for in-game utility and I'm sure those tokenomics kind of change as as they need to balance the game. They'll they'll adjust uh, the tokenomics on that. So how do you play? You can purchase or rent. I mean, it's very similar to Zedrun. I don't know if Zedrun has rentals, uh, just because their pricing, at least right now, is pretty cheap. So I think their their breeding utility, I think, is quite a bit uh, larger than like D Race. I'm pretty sure has limited supply right now on horses. Pegasi, let's see what their, I think I checked a little while ago, their, their horses were a decent uh, decent price as well, I think maybe like 0.25 ETH or something like that. Let's see. Ooh, 0.5 ETH. Yeah, that's a little uh, little spendy for a horse there, so that, that, uh, that floor is definitely definitely up there. And I'm, I would imagine the reason uh, some of these are so high in floor price is because some of the, the bigger gaming guilds, if you've heard of like Yield Guild Games, and some of these guilds who are uh, really investing pretty heavily into like Axie Infinity and those types of play to earn games, once uh, once money gets involved and once you can earn real money from the game, it's it's going to really up the competitiveness and, and uh, incentivize people to team up and become, uh, you know, become a part of a guild and invest a larger amount of capital so you can get the best horses and so forth. Now Zed Run is, is fairly cheap. Um, what do you guys think? Should we just should we pick up a horse or two in Zed Run and see if we can do a race? See if uh, I don't know if I have any polygon ETH right now. I might have to go swap for some. I do need to go to get some ETH. So let's see where I can swap here for, I could probably just go to quick swap, I would imagine. 
don't really want to pay Ethereum gas fees to bridge ETH over to Polygon, so let's see if I can just swap for a little bit of ETH here. All right, so I need 0.01, right? Yeah, D-Race is definitely out of my price range. Um, well, let's see the properties. I wonder what the best horse is. I haven't really done a whole ton of research, so I'll leave, uh, leave this one up to y'all. What do you think, uh, what kind of horse should I get here? So it looks like uh, Bloodline Buterin is the most common one, so that's probably all these cheap ones I would imagine are are kind of a, the bottom bottom levels, but breed type cross, what kind of breeds do we have? Let's see what options we have. We have Buterin, Finny, Nakamoto, <laughs> and, uh, and Zavo. Breed type, we have Exclusive, Legendary, Genesis, Elite, Cross, and Pacer. Okay, so yeah, I'm, I would imagine Exclusives are going to have a higher price floor. Let's see. Oh, there's an Exclusive for 0.01. That is actually is the most common one. There's less Crosses out there, actually. So Legendary, let's see what Legendaries are at. Legendaries are also at, at 0.01. Genesis. Okay, Genesis starts to come a, a little bit more expensive. Genesis is at 0.1. There's an Elite, Elite at 0.01 as well. And then the Pacers are the most rare breed, but no, they're still pretty cheap as well. The Crosses, same thing, 0.01. So we really have our choice of breed. Um, color, you know, I would imagine doesn't really affect um, performance too much in the races. Genotype, it looks like... These are all, these all start with a Z, goes from Z0 all the way up to like a Z, I wonder if this means generations, Z up to Z250 it looks like, 260, 267 is the max. Let's, uh, let's do a quick, uh, quick Z run starter horse and we'll see what, uh, what makes the most sense. Nakamoto's the rarest, most expensive, Buterin is the most common and cheapest, yep. Yeah. Okay. Yep, we know how to MetaMask works. We know how that works. Okay, that didn't really tell us much. All right, snag a filly or mare off the secondary, and you can both your colts die in. So I imagine that's how you're going to um, breed new horses. So that's pretty cool. Unraced colt for 0.07 ETH. So I guess you need something unraced to uh, to be able to breed it. Double check here. Okay, I may have to do some more research on that, but let's just grab a, let's grab one of these here. Let's do a colt. And what color should we get here? Got a lot of uh, lighter colors, a lot of pinks, purples, darker reds. What do you think? Komodos are 0.03, so about triple the price of a Buterin. Sabo's 0.02. Finney's are 0.01. Here's one called Dead Grandma. Okay. What do you think? Should we get Dead Grandma? Should we get Pie Flipping? Light Muna? <laughs> We've got Jockey Balboa. <laughs> That's pretty cool. Uh, let's take a look at some of these here. Jockey Balboa, we've got Pie Flipping, Dead Grandma. I know Plea. Uh, yeah, we could get an unnamed one. I wonder how uh, unnamed full. I wonder if that's un actually unnamed or if that's what you what they named it. Pacer, China Rose Color, Z146. All right. So let me do the uh, quick swap here. I'm going to need about 0.01. I don't know if there's. Yeah, about point. Let's just do 0.02 here. 
Now let's do 0.05 just in case. No, I don't have that much. Can I even get this? 0.15? Yeah, that should do it. I mean, they won't leave a little bit for gas, but that should, uh, should be enough there. All right, so I only have enough for one horse. We need to uh, we need to make sure we get the right one here. Any thoughts uh, in the chat on which one we want? Final plea. It looks like most of these are Buterans. This one's a Finny. Exclusive. Buteran exclusive. Buteran exclusive. Buteran cross. Here's a Buteran pacer. This one doesn't really tell us anything about... Uh, Creature, what do you think? All right, there are different classes. It looks like some of the uh, let's see. All right, so males uh, can produce three. Three children per month. Females can only give birth to one horse per month. Genesis are acquired via drops, and they're the most desired. So I should probably try to get a Genesis if I can. I don't know. I bet Genesis were a little bit more expensive. Can we name an unnamed one? Let's uh, let's see if we can name one. Dead run horse naming. only change the name of an offspring horse. You can only choose a name. Okay, so we need to make our own horse to get uh, to be able to name it. So why don't we do that on a future stream? So let's just let's get one of the parents then. If we if we know we're going to be making a new horse with a new name, let's try to get one that is a going to be a parent if we can. Let's not do a colt. Let's try to get a stallion or what do we need? A stallion or a colt or stallion is a male racehorse. Philly or mare is a female. Oh, let's try to get a colt or a stallion probably. Breeding is gasless. That's good. This is in the Zed Run docks. Is there an advantage to owning a Genesis racehorse? Oh, Genesis are more rare. But Legendary, it looks like, is better. Okay. Are there limits? Yeah. Perfect. Okay, 28 days to the racehorse's birthday. One month to the day that it's born before you can start uh, breeding it, it looks like. 28 days. All right, here are the racing classes. Nope, that didn't uh, didn't work. Here's racing, racing classes. All right, so a griffin is unraced. Class five is Z, so that's the Z um, the Z level. So we should probably find one with a lower class if we can. So we want a Z like zero through twenty if we can. Yeah, this does look super complicated now that uh, now that we're jumping into it. It's kind of interesting though. Uh, so let's see if we can find one. Let's just choose all the Z. Uh, maybe Z's are how many races they've done. We've got to find one for under 0 0.015. I don't know if we're going to find one under 20 then. Choose all these. Try to get one under 20 if we can. Uh, 0.02. All right, we'll go up to 30. Uh, 21 to 50 actually is the next one, so we can go all the way up to 50. Man, I wish there was just a selector for this so you didn't have to click all these at once. One at a time. Go all the way down. 
there's a 175. We're getting close. We're so close. I think we'll get one under 50. I think we'll be good. Come on now. Oh, that's a 268. We can't do that one. One six five, we're almost there. Should be in the forties then we'll get one. Come on now. There we go. Blazing run. That's our lowest Z number we can get. Alright. And that is a Z forty. Buterin cross. Uh, orange coral wave coat, a stallion. Perfect. All right, we will get this one. So this is what we're after, talking about where you have to sign um, the request to approve. Um, so you have to do one approval with OpenSea so that you can basically grant OpenSea uh, permission to spend that currency from your wallet then you can just sign the message you know in the future you don't have to do a, a separate transaction every time you can just sign a message so it doesn't cost doesn't cost gas so that's the kind of same kind of thing you have to do with wrapped eth when you're on the ethereum side of things you need to approve that currency for your wallet for the open contract so that they can use their wallet to spend your your currency all right so i think we have this horse now i hope we do let's refresh here we go. We own Blazing Run. So let's head to Zed Run now. Let's see if we can do a race. Want to play Zed? Yes. Let's start. What? Okay. It's all right. Brave is blocking some things. Is there betting in the races too? I'm sure there is some sort of betting. I mean, there's definitely prize pools. Zed run, Zed dot run. Yep. Let's sign in. Okay, I'm gonna pull this off screen in case I need to put in any personal information. Let's just make sure here. I guess this is just making sure I'm over 18. They don't want to. Okay. Yeah, you didn't you didn't have to put in anything except your your birth date. All right, so here we are. We are now in Zed Run. We can go to our stable. Um, uh oh. Did we get scammed? Did we get a horse that we can't race with? Race horses ready to race. Racing. Here's an entry fee. I think class. What class were we in? With Z. Z40. We are in class four. So we need to find a class four race. Here's class four. Here's a free race. Still saying I don't have any racehorses. Um, okay. You sure about that? Is this not a racehorse? I'm confused. Birthday is October 8th. Hmm. Let's refresh here. You may have just seen me get scammed live on stream. Maybe it's injured. Yeah, honestly, uh, clearly this this is not as easy to jump into as I was thinking. I, I was thinking we were just going to be able to grab a, a horse and get racing, but clearly, clearly it's a lot more complicated than that. All right, so let's just click buy a racehorse. Let's see. It says go to OpenSea. I mean, that's literally what we did. We went to OpenSea. We got a horse. 
what uh, what more do we need to do? Here's a list of all our recent transactions. Let's see if it shows the horse there. No recent activity. Uh, okay. Clearly not the case. It tells us to go to OpenSea. We, we went to OpenSea and we bought a horse. But we cannot race it. Nothing under the racing tab. We went to racing. Yeah, when we went to racing, we went to class four, which it is a Z40. It says you do not have any race horses. And it says go to marketplace. When we go to marketplace, it links us to OpenSea. None of these tabs do anything. Breeding. I mean, we have a male, so if we find a female. Oh, yeah, this is only males. Roster. Okay. It's a race roster. A new, every Z race, race horse purchased or bred will appear here. 1634. We bought this one at, maybe it takes a little while. Maybe it has to, this is 36. So maybe it just hasn't come in yet. Lowest price, what if we get ours for? Ours has to be kind of on the low end. 0 0.01, 0.0109. Ours was called Blazing Run. So I'm not seeing Blazing Run here. Hmm. Hey, good call there, creature. So we do have to transfer it. Where are we? Do we have to transfer it? You can transfer them to your email wallet or others. I wonder if we have to create an account, a separate account? We just did create an account. Um, there we go. All right, it just took a little while to load. Class four, so we can jump in here. Uh, let's find one that's almost full. Here we go. So let's see class four. Let's filter to class four and find the fullest race because I want to just get racing. Itching for a race. Ooh, 12 of 12. Ooh, these ones have prizes. Oh, you have to enter then. You have to pay to enter. Hmm. None of these are almost full. Let's do, do the free three of 12. Yeah, I didn't get scammed. All right, should we do lucky number seven gate? What gate uh, What gate should we pick here? For the A-shaped stakes, we'll read up on that while we're waiting. Seven, we're going to seven. Which racehorse, not eligible? The Z40, class five. Oh, that's even, even better. We are a noob. So we should have more horses we can race with here. Ooh, should we race for money? Let's put $2 in to win 29. So we're totally going to win our first race. Let's do it. Uh, let's make sure there's no gas fee here. Sweet. All right. We're all in. in the first Zed Run race.
you can basically take that token and uh, move it over to a different chain. It's like you can get wrapped Bitcoin on, on the Ethereum network. You can wrap up your ETH and put it on the Polygon network, for example. And so that's what basically uh, ETH versus wrapped ETH. Uh, in the case with OpenSea, they use it so they can uh, transfer it you know, in their, in their uh, wallet. They want to give uh, access or approval. So you give approval to OpenSea to spend your wrapped ETH basically for you. Um, I think basically so that uh, you don't come in and realize all your ETH is gone from your wallet and panic. They want to have it separate. Um, yeah, sorry, I think my mic cut out there. Okay, uh, it definitely reduced the balance of our wallet. So where did the race happen? Reading limit reached, we'll be able to do that in 19 days. Interesting. All right, we get it. Where's our, where's our horse? There's no race results found. This is a uh, very interesting. Is it results? Did it race already? Oh, it actually did. All right. Let's watch this one then. Alright, we're blazing run, so we're in number six. Your stable name. Let's do Holiday Ape Club. Oh, I can I can actually link this to you guys, so if you want to jump in here, you can. Here we go, gate six, blazing run. That's us. Alright, let's skip the intro. Let's get to the race here. Go. All right. And Blazing Runs right there. Oof. We're getting our ass kicked here. What is the distance on this? This is 2,400 meters. So I know different horses do di do better at different uh, distances. So we're, we're starting to pass this gold one on the right. But we are, we are definitely... Uh, Getting worked here. I think we're in last place. Yeah, this is looking not great. Ooh, we might pass moon money. We might not get last. I think uh, this blue one on the right is really having trouble. Nakazabo. Nakazabo. This is this is pretty sad. Maybe we did get scammed after all. I <laughs> think you got like a marathon horse. Well, th I think this is a marathon. This is twenty four hundred meters. <laughs> we haven't, uh, yeah, that Acacia Goddess, the gold one, has been uh, kicking it in because it was it started in the back with us, and now it's really picking up. We actually are starting to pull away now. You're right. Maybe we do have a marathon horse because we're starting to pull up. Now we're in third almost, fourth. There we go. Come on. If we actually win this. Oh, we're in third. Let's go. 700 meters left. Come on, Blazing Run, you got this. All right, so we're peaking right around 1,800 meters right now. Uh-oh, I think Burn Baby's really pulling out. We're down to fourth. Come on, Blazing Run, you got this. Here's the finish line coming up, 300 meters. Burn Baby's so far ahead. Oh, man. We're down to fifth. We're definitely still holding our own. We're in the middle of the pack now. Green's coming up on the outside. Cash printer. Ooh, and Burn Baby takes it. What do we get? Sixth? Seventh? Here's the finish replay. 
one, two, three, four, five, six. I think we got seventh on that one. Unfortunate. That was that was intense. That was crazy. Blazing run. Pretty much everyone finished in less than uh, less than two seconds there. All right. We uh ooh this prize pool bumped up quite a bit. This is one for real money. It's a little bit shorter. This is only uh fourteen hundred meters, so we can watch this one. Uh, this one's quite a bit longer. Let's see our oh we got sixth on that one, so not that great. I think we said eighteen hundred was kind of the range we were pulling out on the first one, so we might have a good shot at this one. Let's watch the uh the money race here. Here we go. This is the one that actually is for the big bucks for all the ETH. Blazing run. We're in the very first lane here. Yeah, we definitely do not have a, uh, a quick sprint horse. We are in dead last right now. <laughs> G-Man says I'm going to have a gambling problem after watching this. Oh, there we go. We're starting to pick up. We're in 10th. We're in 9th. We're in 10th again. We're starting to pull ahead. Oof. Nope. We're, we're, still, uh, we're still in the back of the pack here. Which is weird. From this angle, it doesn't look like we're that far back. But we are dead last still. 700 meters? I think it was around the 1800 meter range we started pulling out uh, last race, so we might have a chance still. We're in 11th. Oof. Oh, man. Okay, they're really pulling out now. Complicated winks and chicken soup. Let's take a look at what, what horses these are. This one is a Sabo Z16. 0, 3, and 7. Never won. And there's chicken soup, which is a... Z11 Zabo as well. So it looks like the Zabos are some of the better sprinting horses. This is a Buterran Cross, though, in first right now. This Desert Sandy. They're going to win. <laughs> oh, no. We got ninth. I don't know what happened to that horse in the back. That was that was sad. But yeah, Holy Nitros. They really kicked it up a notch. Buterran just out of nowhere. 1,400 meters. So Z, that says Z86 Buterran. That was their career 1 0 and 0. So that was their first race ever. And it also says win rate 8.33%. So I'm not sure what that means, but we ended up getting 11th. I thought we were in 8th. On the 8th, or it was showing us an 8th place on the, the scoreboard, but clearly we did not uh, did not do that well. Well, there we go. Three races down, <laughs> three three losses. We'll have to uh, we'll have to figure out how to breed. I'll, I'll do some more reading on the game mechanics and uh, We'll get a Holiday Ape Club stable going and see what we can do. Maybe we can get everyone a horse and uh, and I'll jump in a race or something. I think that'd be pretty fun. Murder says he's checking out Thetan Arena right now. Let's take a look at it. Ooh, it's a MOBA. Yeah, I used to play a lot of uh, a lot of Dota 2, so I'm uh, definitely a MOBA gamer. The official version has been launched. Ooh, they've got a token already. Battle Royale, solo and duo. Let's see this. I think that'd be kind of cool to get the... Uh... Oh, uh, this looks like... Um... What is that game called? It's like the Battle Royale... Um... Brawl, something Brawl. Brawl Stars, yes. Yeah, I played a little bit of that. So this is literally a, a Brawl Stars ripoff with uh, NFTs. I love it. Okay. Hey, that's kind of cool. So your NFTs are then are your heroes, I would imagine. Holy, are they actually selling for this much? Okay, I was gonna say, you gotta spend twenty five hundred bucks to get a decent hero. That's gonna be rough. Yeah, no, this is this looks pretty cool. I wonder uh, if and when these NFTs come out, how it's going to be, and we might be able to get a uh, a drop here with the alpha and if it's beta testing or it says it's launched. I don't know if that's uh, if they're gonna do some airdrops or whatnot. 
are the heroes already out uh murder have, do you have a do you have any heroes coming soon they're selling in the marketplace let's check it out oof they are oh man nine ten bnb for these for the tier ones here's a level two what are these different mythical so let's sort by the cheapest mythical okay that's not too bad f fg i wonder if that's a tier rating or what that is trophy class we have s5 all the way down to h price range they've got battles mythical I think this is a skin, so this is just how they look, I would imagine. Because a normal is 0.19. There are some mythicals for 0.19, but they're F and G um, battle ratings, or trophy ratings, I should say. So if we did the trophy class up to, like, D and above. Oh, there's a D up there for the same price. Okay, C is when we start getting up into the 0.2 BNB range. Now we're up to B, still 0.2, all right, it's looking good. A, still 0.2. S is where we get to the 0.5 BNB range, and then it looks like we have S, oh, SS, not S5. So the cheapest SS is 1.19 BNB. Interesting, interesting. And imagine, just like Brawl Stars, they all have their own abilities, different stats. Total ba battles eligible for earning GTHC. So I would imagine you have a certain amount of battles you can earn the token with. And then... Then what? And then you just stop earning tokens? Or do you have to get that many battles in order to earn tokens? Seventy two out of two forty seven. It looks like it's about two fifty the total total balance battles eligible so yeah i'll have to i'll have to read into it this looks like a fun game too maybe we can uh we can get a game night going with uh with these i think if you use it you know prior to to some of the you know especially now that it just launched they, they may be doing some airdrops and, and whatnot uh murder says his friend makes 13 dollars an hour playing it oh wow that's pretty cool that's pretty cool looks like you can buy your own uh are your own heroes drop rates in the boxes or you can so they have a thc and a thg token connect the wallet here and see oh it's on binance smart chain that's right um downloading the game let's uh let's download it we won't be able to play it today but maybe uh maybe like next week we'll set something up Looks like it's on oh it's on ios as well does your uh does your friend play on ios or pc plays on pc yeah imagine if especially if it's cross-platform probably uh <laughs> sticky says i'm downloading brawl stars <laughs> yeah i would imagine there's gonna be uh be some level of um, advantage if it's cross-platform because you're certainly going to be better at, on PC than you are on mobile. But if it's not cross-platform, if mobile plays against mobile and PC plays against PC, then it that would be a little more fair. But looks like they're coming out with uh, guilds, cosmetics, 42-player games in Q1. You'll be able to rent heroes. Um, let's see. Oh, actually. That was uh that was a little quicker than I thought. We might actually be able to be able to play this here. All right. Uh I'm going to share the screen. Let me enter in this code here. We might be able to play this real quick. I guess if anyone else wants to 
to download it real quick. If it's if it's that fast for me, it might be fast for you as well. You need to uh, to get a code from your email to verify your account. Oh, that's very loud. Let me turn that down. Let's share the screen. Can y'all see that uh, on the stream there? So I'm going to get three random heroes to start. It's nice I don't have to buy any. Deal shot, rocket master, marksman. We've got a protective gunner, a tank. And who's my third one? Radon, an assassin. He brings the peace, but he's ready for war. Sweet. Turn down this music. Oh, man. Alright, graphics are high, we're good. Skill. Available skills, 13 of 22, so we can... I guess we can pick any of these skills. I mean, this is a legendary skill. I feel like we should maybe have a legendary one. I don't know. So we have Bullet Storm and Ghost Fade. Invisibles for the epics. Cool. All right, let's run with it. And then we've got heroes. Which hero should we go with? The uh, the tank. Should we go with the assassin, or should we go with the rocket master? Someone make the call. It says non GTHC, so I would imagine you can't earn tokens with this. All right, let's try this guy. Anyone, uh, anyone have this installed? I'll add you to the game real quick, if you do have it. If not, we'll just uh, get started. Yeah, it is very loud. I just turned off the music because it's. I had to turn it down uh, audio-wise. All right, here we go. Yeah, so this literally is like Brawl Stars. I mean, this is going to be way easier on PC. I don't know how mobile is going to compete against PC. It's not super complicated, I guess, but... Here's our first kill. Get the orb. We're getting wrecked. Ugh! Please heal me. Looks like you regen out of combat as well. See ya. Another kill. That guy's dead. Nice. Oh, we're definitely wrecking the bots. Uh, it wants us to upgrade our skill here. So that dashes. Cool. And F does a huge blast. Nice. All right, and it wants us to kill this. This giant gift here, see what we get. Five, four, three, two, one. Here we go, we won. That's a tutorial. I mean, pretty, pretty straightforward. It's pretty much like Brawl Stars if you've played that. It seems very, very similar. Literally a, a a clone of Brawl Stars. So definitely a definitely an interesting game. Definitely one. I mean, it's basically Brawl Stars with where you can earn tokens. So that's cool. So that's THC, um, which I would imagine is kind of like your your basic currency. And then it looked like um, once you got a certain hero, you could play and unlock unlock GTHC for the game. So I would imagine that those heroes are you can play for like 250 games. And then whatever, however you're in the green token as well, the GTHG. But cool. All right. Yeah, THC. All right. Well, uh, yeah, maybe we'll do that for for one of our future streams here next week. Give everyone a little bit of time to to download it, check it out, um, and then maybe we can all party up and do a battle. Um, 
it looked like they were coming out with like 42 player death matches, so that looks pretty cool. Uh, we can for sure do like a 3v3 or maybe a 5v5. I don't know what, what uh, games they all have, but we can add some friends. I'll squad up, get a Holiday Ape Club uh, squad going, and we'll be good to go. Perfect. All right, well, I think that's all, all for the stream here today. Mm -hmm. We will uh, we'll definitely own if we uh, if we get a squad going. We can also set up a Zed Run night so everyone can get get their horses. The horses are pretty cheap um, on Polygon. They're like 0.01 ETH, so in that 20 to 40 dollar range basically um, for a horse. So we can certainly do some horse racing um, at different different distances and whatnot, and we'll go from there. So thanks everyone for joining the stream. Definitely some interesting play to earn games here coming up. Yeah, when murder murders you. Yeah, I'm not looking forward to that. I feel like uh, I feel like murder's a heavy gamer, so we will uh we'll see we'll see who the best brawl staller is or brawl star is. But uh, that would be pretty sweet if we could get a guild going and like build up a treasury of whatever tokens we have, start buying NFTs for the for the club. I think that would be pretty solid. Um, so we'd certainly have uh you know after our holiday ape club uh initial launch we'll we'll have you know probably future collections as well but it would be nice to have a, a treasury of where we're kind of buying up uh, some additional additional nfts or have a token you know from whatever if we're playing play to earn games or whatnot i think uh, i think it'd be cool to set up a, a guild system like that but we'll see how it goes we'll see what people like and we'll see what games are fun and go from there so thanks for the suggestions everyone this was a this was a super fun stream um check out uh yeah check out zed run D Race and, and Pegasus are those other games. The floor is a little bit higher than those. I mean, they they may be more successful games, but Zed Run is, is certainly a little bit easier to, to get into. So, yeah, thanks everyone for joining. Murder, glad you were able to jump in. This was a lot of fun. Creature, Steggy, G Man, Twamuk. Thanks everyone. Take care. We'll talk to you soon.